Happy Friday, everybody, and welcome to the FYI podcast, where we talk about faith, life, adulting, relationships, finances, and so much more. I'm Micah Keneally. I'm Josiah Keneally. We're your hosts. Welcome to the show. Thanks for journeying with us and for sending in your questions about Mm -hmm. all things young adulting. It can be hard. Life can be hard. Young adulting can be hard. Don't do it alone. Right. Find a godly community to plug into. Find a local church to be a part of, and let us join you along this journey. And we're going to unpack each week um, God's wisdom, not our thoughts, but what the word of God teaches, what the Bible teaches. And in the process, today's episode is presented by our partners at GFA World. This is an amazing organization based out of Texas that has a paid apprenticeship program for you if you're exploring the call of missions. Mm -hmm. Um, There's either a three-month or a six-month opportunity for you to have a paid apprenticeship program to discover God's heart for every nation and every generation. More details are in the show notes below. Also, we'd love to invite you May 17th through 19th to Lake Geneva in Alexandria, Minnesota. Tell them about it, babe. Yes. So the weekend is 17th through the 19th of May. It is where hundreds of young adults gather who are asking questions that you're asking in a season of life that you're in. Ages 18 to 30 are coming around the word of God. Love it. Experiencing worship, experiencing Love personal it. breakthrough, discovering new friendships, experiencing healing, getting water baptized, maybe experiencing the call of God in ministry of the marketplace, in addition to saying yes to Jesus for the very first time. So these are just great days to get together, to rally around before the summer months actually begin to really set the tone, set your heart right for Christ in the beginning of the summer months. So when summer comes and opportunities come that are not good and not godly, you hopefully could have made some friends along the way in the journey that you can develop some deep, meaningful friendships and relationships and stay connected throughout the entire year, not just at the weekend. Amazing opportunity this May. We'll see you at the weekend. And hey, we are so grateful for everyone who is tuning in, whether it's on YouTube or wherever you stream your podcasts. But uh, we will shout out Aria on Apple Podcasts. Aria just left us a super kind review. She said, wisdom that is very needed. She goes, wow, I can't recommend this podcast enough. I listen weekly and every time I'm impacted by the wisdom shared. It's so encouraging that they take time to answer questions that real people are asking. It's not chat GPT, by the way. Correct. These are questions from you, the listeners. One thing that hit Aria, she said, is that they don't base their answers off of personal opinions. They're basing it off what the Bible specifically says. Clarity and directness that is so refreshing when lines in our culture are being blurred. She recommended it a thousand out of 10. Oh, well, so take it. thank you to you. And hey, if you're listening Or if you're watching on YouTube, would you leave us a comment, a review, share this with your small group, Mm -hmm. your young adult ministry. And last week in this mini series on great at work, Mm -hmm. we unpacked where are all the great leaders. Yeah. And today we um, want to, you know, honestly, just unpack the idea of connecting, Mm -hmm. networking quote unquote, if you will, and building a personal network before you need one, building a board of advisors before you need one, and even how to start a LinkedIn page. Oh, so I'll let you teach them on that. Well, let's get practical, don't you think? Yeah. I would say that in my experience, just super practically that we have on our board, actually one of our board members, she oversees global HR, Mm -hmm. head of a very, very large organization that's global. And no matter what country she might be hiring someone in or for, Mm -hmm. one of the things she told us that she does first is she checks the prospective um, applicant. She checks their LinkedIn profile. What type of things are they engaging in? commenting on, liking, sharing. Of course, there's the resume, right? And there, but it's also like, hey, what are they celebrating? What are they supporting? What type of community member are they? Are what what mm-hmm. type of stuff are they liking or commenting or sharing on LinkedIn? And so I just think very practically that if you are looking for a job, if mm-hmm. you're looking to advance in the workplace, right? Um, we're not just talking about the corporate ladder, but I would say in 2024, even one of our friends in the Silicon Valley, he gave us a heads up. He goes, LinkedIn is about to pop off. 
my friend Griffin in Southern California, he goes, look, a lot of my friends that used to work at Facebook and Instagram, they all just got hired by LinkedIn. And LinkedIn is, I never use LinkedIn anymore. It's really bizarre. Maybe I should jump on board. I'm sick of myself and the listener. Well, I mean, my goodness, I even, as we travel and speak, I've been at a few events where a lot of people in the business community are not on social media, right? Like they are on LinkedIn, but they're on LinkedIn and they're yeah. watching. Like I can, I can tell well, you LinkedIn that. is like the yellow pages of the 1990s. Let's just get real. That's what I would say. That should be their tagline. Yellow pages. <laughs> for sure. And, and I think that like, oh. for me, I've just like, part of what we do is building a network and like our nonprofit is supported by people's generosity right so part of how people are even seeing the good news or, or hearing about the good reports is because I do post on LinkedIn well and I would say LinkedIn is well if you use Instagram if you're on TikTok if you're using Facebook in like whatever LinkedIn I think all of them essentially if you do add LinkedIn to one of your bios or whatever I just think it expands your territory and gives you another lane of access to people and people to you that's essentially what it is is it another sure. thing to manage Absolutely. But if you know who you are, you know who you are, you know what you're enjoying and where you're at and where you want to go in life. I think this can be a great tool and a great resource to expand your networking opportunities, not just locally, but globally um, in the professional lane of which maybe you're functioning or wanting to grow in or go in. So I would just say just adding another lane to accessibility. So this is our highway and byway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So unpack some of your thoughts on the idea of connecting or networking. Oh, man. Well, first, let's, let's talk about the Bible. What the Bible talks about essentially all throughout scripture is we were not born to die. Yes and no. We were born and created in the image of God to do life in community so with believers and yep. non-believers yep. who see life transformation so and see the world around us transformed because and for the love of Jesus in and through the believer in the room. Mm -hmm. So I would say, why do we make connections? Why do we network? It's biblical to do life together. Why, whether you're in the marketplace or if you're in ministry, why do we always ask, where is the after party? Where are we going out for lunch today? Where are we going to watch the game? Why do we rally around a table? It is biblical. They rallied around the table for deep, meaningful conversations, mm -hmm. for good food and community. Like, that is biblical in and of itself. So when we're taking that into the business marketing setting or the ministry, wherever sure. you're called, I'll say sure. the marketplace. We'll say marketplace throughout this episode. We are called to network because God wants us to be connected. Yeah. First yeah. and foremost, connect to the heart of God if you're listening as a believer. And secondly, to the hearts of the people around us, believers and non-believers. So in that sense, I would say we have been given technology, I believe in this day and age as a gift, as a resource to access more people mm -hmm. to and fro both mm -hmm. sided mm -hmm. to change the world faster for the name of Jesus That's and beautiful. to change whether maybe, maybe you're just very eco-friendly and you're just like, let's preserve this earth and let's continue to make it a better place. There are people and places that you can connect work, connect, connect with connect work. That's a good word, huh? Connect work. <laughs> connect work that you can connect with around the world to see change and be a part of that change, especially as a Gen Zer. If you're listening, we know the rally cry and elements of your heart as a generation at large is to be a part of the change, a change. You want to make things better on all fronts. And I love that about you guys as just a generation that's hungry for that. So one way that we do that is get people of like-mindedness to start learning from each other, different approaches and different networking, networking opportunities. So I guess I just go back to the biblical principle, just kind of put that groundwork out there and just say, Hey, let's start here and build up. And yeah. What are you nodding for? Well, we, got an idea. hundred percent. We usually do a verse of the day <laughs> on FYI you, podcast, you but I actually have two words of the day instead okay. that are found okay. all throughout scripture. And it's a little different. These two words appear in my, it, it like, in the New Testament and all alike, all throughout scripture is one another. Mm. Love one another. John 13 says, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another just as I have loved you. You are to love one another. Honor one another. Romans 12.10. To outdo 
one another in showing honor. Greet one another. Um, First Peter, First Corinthians, and Romans all say to greet one another. And I pay attention to that in in any room you walk into. Pay attention to greetings and goodbyes. Yeah. And some people disappear. Some people appear out of nowhere, but it, it's like we've heard Derry Northup from a uh, church in Colorado say, when you walk into a room, don't say, here I am, but notice other people and say, there you are. Right. Welcome one another. Romans 15, 7. Show hospitality to one another. First Peter 4, 9. Have okay. fellowship with one another. First John 1, 7. Agree with one another. From 2 Corinthians 13, live in harmony with one another. Romans 12, 16, be at peace with one another. And this is Mark 9, 50, be kind to one another. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 4, 32, same verse, forgive one another, bear with one another, same chapter, bear one another's burdens. Galatians 6, 2, comfort one another, care for one another, confess sin to one another, pray for one another, encourage one another. Build one another up for the sex. Introvert alone. is panicking right now. <laughs> Should I stop there? But it's no, no, no. serve it one another. On and on. It's beautiful. Wash one another's feet. Speak the truth. Do not be uh speak against each other. Don't judge each other. So so good. I skipped some. I know you did. But Their whole the idea is that we're to build each other up. Yeah. We're to love each other, honor each other, mm-hmm. and bottom line, not do life in isolation right. or loneliness. But it's a part of the body Yeah, in every sphere, yep. in our workplace, our neighborhood, our school, our community. And I will say this, I have been in seasons where I have isolated myself because it's mm-hmm. easier, it's more comfortable. And I quote unquote, feel more focused on myself. But when we, when I've done that, and maybe you could agree or disagree on the other side of this conversation, when I have begun to do that, I begin to insulate myself and forget about others. Wow. But the moment I look in the mirror and it's like, okay, why am I feeling? Because then you get, my spirit gets agitated, right? Sure. Because I'm not doing life with one another. I'm doing it by myself. And I think COVID has changed many things from working from home, starting your own businesses, doing whatever, <laughs> not with one another. Yeah. And the moment I have stepped into a serving role, I'm not getting paid to do it. It's me volunteering. It's going to feed my starving children. It's serving at my local church. It is volunteering to mentor somebody. I'm not getting paid to do any of those things. But the moment I start pouring out is when I feel the most filled up because I'm doing life with others and to see others changed. At church, it's to just encourage and edify the body. Mentorship is to see personal transformation and spiritual growth in these women that I've been with. In the... um, feed my starving children or those things, packing boxes. We are changing the world, the, the literally the world. And we're praying over these boxes that are just going to impact these little tummies that are starving. Wow. So it's like when we start insulating that has, that those are warning signs for me personally. Like I need to take a personal inventory. Why am I not satisfied? Why am I angry? Why I, you see all the eyes? I, 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 there's a lot of self-reflection of my personal dissatisfaction in everything but the moment I start coming out of the insulation process I don't know what the opposite of that is <laughs> you have an opposite oh, word 100 you know what I'm it's, saying it's like, like maturity is moving beyond yourself it's right. moving to re- recognize that we yes. is greater than me right and I would even say like even I want to encourage the listener if you're in a season where you feel like you're not seen or you're hidden or you're just don't feel like you have met your people group yet. Or you're like, these are not my people. If this is what I have to choose from, then I want to be the loner. We're not called to do life alone. Yeah. And I think that when we come across many people are like, I'm just the lone wolf or I'm just the outsider. I'm Danger just that. Zone. I'm just this. You lead yourself into the middle of a field for the enemy to attack all around you. And nobody has your back because nobody's with you. But the moment you start developing your friendships, relationships, and people in your tribe around you, you will be able to go further faster with your occupations, with your studies, with your relationships, with your fun factor of how you fill your calendar with activities is to do it with others. And I don't care if you're an introvert or an extrovert, we are all designed to do life together. How you recharge and how you get filled up is only a little determining factor of the introvert versus extrovert. So- 
that's what I would say my personal experience has been. And maybe somebody can relate on the other side of this conversation. Oh. So when you want to lean out, this is what I would say. This is what I was getting to. I forgot. When you're wanting to lean out and pull away, that's generally when you need community the most. And you should actually be leaning into your own messy, maybe, or into your own personal dysfunction to include others to rally around. Because a tribe of believers and a tribe of people coming around you when you're walking through the hardest things in and of life only makes you and your character stronger and you don't do it alone. So like Mowgli says, Mowgli. the strength of the wolf is the strength of the pack. Yeah. Did I get that right? And I mean, honestly though, like one day you are going to need a network. Yeah. One day you're going to need a job to pay the bills to provide for a family, to have purpose and meaning and, and to contribute to society. So one day you're going to need some connections. Why not have them start today, maybe before you even need them? Right. That's the idea of building a, a network before you need it is you're going to need it someday. Mm -hmm. So prepare for the future. Right. Proverbs talks about a great reputation is worth more than gold or silver or rubies. Mm -hmm. And the idea of a network is... Um, I, I think it can, it can feel like a greasy word and I always prefer net, like community or connection or one another, a yeah. tribe more yeah. so than like a network, but to use what you're going to understand, um, I would just say like a, a couple quick examples, like we started young adults today as a nonprofit almost coming up on two years ago, mm -hmm. 2022 June. And so two years ago, we were making asks to get our paperwork in order to file with the, the IRS to legally have a board of advisors, a board of directors. Which you need in place. Which you need in place. And for the most part, those asks were easy for people to say yes, because they had been on our personal board for years. They had been giving us mentorship, mm -hmm. advice, friendship. friendship, counsel, community. And so for them to step into an accountability, a governance, mm -hmm. a, a structure mm -hmm. for the legal entity of our ministry, it made sense. Because they knew our character, they knew our calling, and they understood how we do community. And they've been involved in our life, yeah. our marriage, our ministry for our marriage. A lot of them, they've been a part of it the whole time mm -hmm. we've been married, going back mm -hmm. even into our singleness when we were in our twenties, Right. they were doing life. So they might've known us for 10, 15, or even 20 years right. to know our track record, to know our reputation. Right. And so I think building a network before you need one, I mean, going to some Christian business breakfasts, go maybe join a mastermind. Mm -hmm. Something that we've done is looked at like, what are the areas of our life where we need growth or breakthrough in? And one of our friends, like this week, he's hosting a Canva, like social media, what you need to know course. It's an e-course online. I've signed up for YouTube classes. Um, it, and, and those are things that were never a part of my formal education. Right. But the world is changing. And something you talk about often is continuing education credits. Mm -hmm. But I think for all of us, the goal is to be lifelong learners. Right. And maybe what would be your challenge or encouragement to, to say, look, I, I don't have five people who could sit on a board of advisors. Mm -hmm. I don't have 50 people that could make up my community or tribe or network. How could we get started today practically? Well, one, I think using social media, not to tear people down, but to build people up and edify the kingdom, I think is one approach. So if you don't have the social media lanes that we talked about earlier, maybe start an account. And yep. even if it's just very small, start checking out other things that you're interested in and the areas that you want to grow in. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would say starting there, I would, along with that, be comfortable being uncomfortable. Like that's, that's so all. Good. Like, Hey, do you want to be my friend? Hey, do you mind? Can we get a cup of coffee? Can we do one mentoring session. Cause I just want to hear your story about how you did X, Y, Z. Like, yeah. Whatever that is, I'd say become a good question asker and don't walk into any and all conversations thinking that you are the answer to somebody else's prayer. 
be humble enough to approach the fact that, hey, I'm young, I'm wanting to learn and I'm looking for a friendship. I'm looking for mentorship. I'm looking for an apprenticeship, an internship. Like go in every room with your head held high, like looking around, not held high, but I mean like looking up, put your phone away and look people in the eye and get comfortable being uncomfortable. Because the moment you start doing that, your demeanor changes, your body language changes, how you approach conversation matures and it, things take practice. So if you're like, I'm like that awkward one that just doesn't know what to say or do, fine. Just say like, you know what? I'm awkward sometimes and I'm putting myself out there today. Just says, get it out of the way and be uncomfortable. So I would just say those two things for sure. And I would say if you're on a college campus and you have um, entrepreneurs coming, if you have business people coming, and if you have a chapel where there are different speakers and teachers and there's luncheons provided by the school that you can sign up for to get in a room with them. And maybe they're limited to 20 to 50 people at round tables or whatever. Get in those places and spaces, even on your college campus. If you're not part of a mastermind or you're not part of this big business breakfast thing quite yet, start by looking at what is on my college campus, because I was in business, so I majored in business communication, and I wish I would have signed up for more of those business mm-hmm. lunches and lunches that I could have, should have, would have done, because I see where my friends are now who stuck with business that are leading multi-million dollar companies and have roles where I'm like, who are you? Like, how did I get to be your friend? Like, who are we? that stuck with it because they put themselves in those rooms, got on those boards, have been serving on the college campus university from homecoming to everything else in between. Um, And granted, I don't live there anymore, so I can't do that. But it's just awesome to see the people who put forth and knew what they wanted, went after it. And they had fun in the process. So invite God in the process, I would say with all of that, because as we decrease, he should increase. And sometimes I think we get that mixed around when we think that we don't need him when things are successful or our TikToks exploding, or you think you're going to become a YouTube sensation overnight. I'm not saying those things can't happen, but if it were to happen, would you be the same person today as you are a year from now, or would you become more like the world and less like Christ? So I don't know. You know, one of our friends, Austin, he owns a company. He's a business owner, Mm -hmm. entrepreneur, and he has made it kind of a a discipline to have breakfast regularly. He's become a regular at a certain restaurant. Mm -hmm. One of the guys I went to college with actually had a job, didn't like it very much, saw Austin and he's like, I want to work for you. Mm. My friend, Dan. And they both tell different sides of the same story. I've heard them both share their perspective. Austin wasn't hiring, but Dan was persistent and said, what would it take for me to get around you? to to start working for you someday say in breakfast. <laughs> and and you know what austin hired him and he doesn't regret it at all and dan's working in his dream job doing work that matters doing work that he loves yeah and so i would say get outside your comfort zone and our friend ken coleman he has an idea called the proximity principle mm-hmm. and he essentially sums it up pretty much by saying you find great opportunities to do the work you love by getting around the right people Mm -hmm. and the right places will lead you to the right opportunity. So if you get in the right places, where are, where are the rooms you need to be in? Mm -hmm. Do you need to pay to attend a conference? Do you need to get to the weekend? Do you need to go to a business brunch? Whatever it is, do you need to join a mastermind? Do you need to go back to school? Whatever it is, what are the rooms you need to get into for the right places? Who are the people you need to know? Mm -hmm. And then from there, when you get in the right places with the right people, the right opportunities come. It's called the proximity principle Mm -hmm. by our friend Ken Coleman. It's a book. You could go back and listen to our episode we did on the Young Adults Today podcast with Ken Mm -hmm. Coleman. But until next time, you're listening to the FYI podcast.